Hello everyone, um, in this video I'll be talking about gear items, consumables and speed items that I would recommend you to get for speed leveling in Dragonflight. Um, so I'll basically be breaking down this video in gear that you might be interested in, consumables, speed items, then uh, whether you want to play with war mode or not, um, add-ons, um, and how you can log out with some external buffs to basically give you an edge uh, for the launch of Dragonflight. Now, first of all, in terms of gear, so this is the character that I'll be leveling first. Um, and so you'll see I have a Krapton of speed. Um, and so, like most people know this, like speed is very nice for leveling, especially early on when the mobs are very weak, if you're quite geared. Uh, but there are multiple ways to kind of get this speed. The easiest thing that I basically bought on all my characters and all my alts is this 262 crafted item um, that if you craft it on ring or neck will have a socket that you can then put your Shadowlands speed gem in. Um, but it also comes with a ton of speed on the item and it's high budget for the item level it is. Now, what you could do is basically create an entire set that has speed um, of these crafted items because like yes that one 262 is unique but you can also craft 230 etc so you could get a full set now i would actually advise against that because while yes speed is nice it also caps off um, so for example like if i unequip this one item with 63 speed i have 37 speed and now i have 34 so really like that one speed item doesn't add that much um, and that's because I have so many speed items, but really like what factors in how fast you are is how quick you kill mobs and how fast you move. So you don't want to gimp one to get the other. Um, so for example, one of the things that some people also use is these low level boots that you could enchant with a speed enchant. I'll put a picture up uh, on the right here uh, and that gives you 10% run speed and that can be very useful in the first zone but then after that I would advise you to probably take that off for something that like increases your damage more. Um, so you can see I have a lot of these speed items then I have a speed gem that gives me more speed for all of the other gems that I have. Um, I chose to um, enchant my cloak with leech just because I have so much speed so it wouldn't really add much. Um, but the key thing that I also wanted to mention that I think a lot of people won't know, um, and this has been the case on the beta since forever, but it's really, really OP, is PvP trinkets. So I have two level 288 trinkets, um, but if you play with war mode, you also get this set bonus that gives you at level 60, 104 int and stamina 300. Now, that doesn't sound particularly strong, but the set bonus actually scales as you level up. Um, and so at level 69, these trinkets would give me for the set bonus only, so even if this was like an item level 200 trinket that I just bought with Honor, this trinket set bonus would give me 456 int and 1304 stamina. And it's the same for like agility classes, strength classes, etc. So... 456 int plus these stats and the on use versus for example a 311 trinket that would still give me 170 int right so these pvp trinkets are really really insane to use um, some other trinkets that are really overtuned are this uh, deteriorated construct core uh, does a lot of damage procs a lot um, and some other unused on trinkets are Dreadfire Vessel that is very strong and the First Sigil. The very nice thing with these unused trinkets is that you can kind of, you can use them, then unequip them, use another one. And yes, you get that 30 second um, timer off where you can't use the trinket, but you can kind of get around using these OP trinkets multiple times. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is in addition to gear, there's a lot of items here that I have that are really, really useful. So the first one are these XP banners, Battle Standard of Coordination, Standard of Unity and Banner of Cooperation. Um, you can just buy them from the guild vendor. Um, and the reason why they're useful is basically you put them down and then in 100 yards around you, you get a little bit of bonus XP just for mobs. So this doesn't work on things like um, quests, but it does work on mobs. Um, and also like some bonus objective mobs that you can kill for more XP, it does work on those. So that's really nice as well. Um, 
And the nice thing is, if you level in a group, there's a benefit to having these banners because they also buff your allies. So you cannot have multiple of them at the same time because they don't stack, but you can see they have a like 10 minute cooldown, right? Um, and what you can do is basically spread out these banners so that you have as much uptime in like high density mob areas as you can for your particular group. Uh, and that's also why I have this weak aura here. That weak aura, um, I'll link it um, in the description as well. Um, but it's really nice because it will basically show all the group members and their banners. And then like if you plant your banner, it basically shows you the cooldown and you can see those cooldowns also of your group members. Now where to get those is like basically your guild vendor and Stormwind is here on the map. Um, what can I do? And your guild vendor basically sells these, um, these banners. Um, but the nice thing also is they also sell these uh, Stormwind cloaks. Now these Stormwind cloaks, they're not massive, but the reason why I get them is because I will be leveling in war mode. I just think that's better if you really want to speed level. Um, but the key thing these Stormwind cloaks allow you is to just return to Stormwind quickly, turn off war, uh, turn war mode back on if you had to turn it off at some point because there were too many horde, um, Hearthstone back to where you were and continue. So that's why I think these cloaks are particularly nice. Other than that, there's just a ton of consumables to help you kill stuff faster, so flasks. Um, I also have these drums of frosty. Now the key thing to note here is, as you can see, they don't work about above level 60. So really, like, I want one of them, um, or maybe two, um, and then you'll be 60 in like 10, 20 minutes. Uh, 61 and 10, 20 minutes. So you don't really need that that many, but it's nice for like the first few pools. We have a ton of uh, battle potions just to make killing uh, stuff a bit quicker. Uh, but one key thing to mention there, and I'll mention it in speed items as well, is like you have this engineering enchant that makes you go very quick, um, but that shares a one minute cooldown with these potions, right? Um, and so in the early areas, you want to use the speed belt. In later areas, you want to use the battle potions to help you kill stuff faster. Um, then we have augment runes, very standard. Um, cosmic healing potions, like the first few zones, everything is super face roll, but the later zones, you'll want health potions at some points, depending on the class you play. Uh, Shadow core oil, or like the different attack power weapon enchants you would want. Uh, shadow berries, and I'll, I'll briefly show in another video, um, I'll basically um, edit this in, where to get these from the rare. Uh, but the really nice thing is like you can get many of them if you want. Um, and if you use them, it gives you like this small heal for a minute. That is particularly nice because like it doesn't take time to use this item and it will keep you topped uh, because you don't really want to spend a global on like a heal or whatever every now and then if you don't have to. So that's why these are nice. Uh, so this is where you can farm the shadow berries. It's in Shadow Moon Valley, uh, which is a Warlords of Draenor uh, dungeon. I'll have the uh, waypoint for the coordinates on the screen. Um, you just kill these three mobs, then this rare or objective becomes active. You loot them, you get the shadow berries. Um, it's a really nice item for healing yourself. Um, you can farm as many as you want of these. Like you don't need that many uh, unless you're under geared, um, but it will be quite nice for leveling in Dragonflight. Uh, this rare, it actually respawns every minute, so you can just stand here and farm it. Similarly, Desolate Armor Kit, just to get a little bit more stamina. Um, Shimmer Scale Diving Suit, there are a couple of areas where you need to swim, and then it's nice to have that. Um, then I just have some like generic Shadowlands enchants um, just for if I get an upgrade in the later zones, I can still enchant that during some RP. I have these speed potions, but they only work at level 60 and they're not as strong as like the light food potion and stuff was before. So I don't think this is super useful, but it could be useful in like a cave or something like that. Um, so those are like the, the main gear items I guess uh, and then here is are a ton of items that are useful just for like what I would call speed items. Goblin glider kits uh, they're very nice because in, uh, in Dragonflight a lot of the zones are kind of designed with elevation in them so you have some really nice spots to glider. 
Um, and gliders also combine really nicely with Falling Flame that I'll talk about in a second. But like gliders, super easy to get, cost like a couple of gold on the auction house. You can also get like the PvP ones, etc. Um, but definitely get those. Then fried bonefish. This is like the the Shadowlands version of speed food, where you gain a little bit of speed if you kill a mob um, for ten seconds, uh, for like eight seconds, I think actually. Um, now for me that is less nice because I have so much speed stat, so it won't give me that much. Um, but it's still a nice thing to have, uh, and especially if you have little speed gear, this is actually quite significant. Uh, gun shoes. Um, it's basically an item that if you use it, uh, you move quite quickly. But the key thing that people often don't tell you with gun shoes is like, so you use gun shoes. The key thing is you can basically bind RP walk and then talk to an NPC, turn a quest in and then press it again to move quickly. So this is super nice if you have like a quest hub where you have to talk to a lot of people, turn quests in, etc. Uh, you can just use this RP walk to the next one, to the next one and turn all of these quests in. So that's why like gun shoes are really, really nice. And they're they're much faster than a mount, right? Um, uh, so the usefulness of gun shoes, you can clearly see here. So you can activate it, then you get close, slow walk, talk, go to the next guy, talk to this guy with slow walk, next guy, Unlucky slow. Uh, and here I can also demonstrate like the bonus objectives. They give a lot of XP. As you can see here, 9k for just killing this one guy. It takes like 5 seconds or less. So this is another gun uh, shoe spot that is really, really nice. Like it's in the first zone doing like an escort, you want to pick up this egg. Nice thing you can do is you can activate slow walk when you're close to the egg. Can't pick it up yet, activate slow walk. Then before you pick it up, you activate gun shoes. So you activate gun shoes, pick it up, un gun unactivate the walk, and then you're, you see you're way quicker than with the egg. Uh, and this saves quite a bit of time. In addition uh, to these uh, gun shoes, uh, the other thing that is very easy to get, like these gun shoes, you just get them on the auction house, are these uh, speed gems. So the Straddling Jewel Doublet is the Shadowlands gem, and that basically gives you 13 speed stat for each Shadowlands gem you have socketed. So you can have sockets on your rings, um, belt, neck, uh, headpiece, and bracers. Um, and so for each gem, so my 16 mastery gem will also give me 13 speed because I have that speed gem in here. Now, there used to be two very strong uh, gems in, um, in BFA. They were called the Stradling Sage Agate um, and the Stradling Viridum. Um, but these have been nerfed on the beta. So you can see, like this used to give 3% speed, just flat. Um, which is obviously much better than 28 speed if if you have a lot of speed already. And the other one gave 5% speed. So that was a free 8% speed, but fun detected. So uh, Blizzard nerfed this. Um, and so I would actually say that this isn't really worth it. Like maybe the 28 one is worth it. And then you kind of shift it with another gem in like the second zone. Um, just because like another gem gives you a little bit of stats plus 13 speed. So the difference is really like 15 speed versus 16 mastery. I don't know, like for me, because I have so much speed, it's not really worth it. Um, the other thing I want to mention that you should really check on all your characters that you're going to level is that you have this light step hoof plates equipped on those characters. So it's the mount equipment. So you can just go to your mount. And then here you have like, I have here the uh, water walking, but you can also just equip these light step hoof plates and that basically gives you 20% extra movement speed on while mounted, which is super nice. Um, the other items that I want to talk to about related to speed is engineering. So I already talked about this uh, belt enchant, which makes you go very quick. It's like a Northern engineering enchant. I'll link a picture of, um, 
of where you can get that and what you need for that. Uh, but so the key thing is you can enchant that on like high item level uh, Shadowlands pieces. Uh, and then the loot rank item. So the loot rank item is just you use it, it casts, it loots like the entire area around you. Um, and so the nice thing about this is there are quite a few areas where you want to loot the mobs. Um, and often if you kill like mobs where I am or where this guard are, they're not in range of each other, so you have to loot twice, which is super annoying, and this loot rank kind of counteracts that. So loot rank, like, it's an absolute game changer to have that. Um, and then, these items are a little bit more annoying to get, uh, the next ones that I talk about, but honestly, they're still pretty easy to get. Um, and I'll also have pictures where you get them and coordinates. So these two items, they're actually from Mists of Pandaria, and they're kind of similar to gun shoes, so they're very quick if you use them. So you see how fast I'm moving. It's actually super fast, but because it's a massive thing, it doesn't look that fast. But the nice thing again, you can RP walk. So you can use this, RP walk, turn stuff in, RP walk again to to move quickly. Um, so that's the first one, which is the yak. And then this one, the oddly shaped horn, exactly the same. Looks a bit cooler, I guess. <laughs> um, and again, you can RP walk, so super nice. Now, these ones, they're unique, and you can kind of get around this, but uh, like I haven't done it, is um, you can delete these items with three charges and then restore them all in your um, in the loot restoration on the Battle.net website, and then you get all of them in the, in the mailbox. So you can have a mailbox full with these, basically. Uh, the reason why I haven't done this is because um, I have six charges, plus I have gun shoes. So here I'll just quickly show you how to get the uh, first speed item, the oddly shaped horn. It's the Sun Grace Behemoth, like he can patrol here sometimes, but it's basically here in MOP, um, between Value 4 Winds and Jade Forest. Just kill him. It's the speed item. Again, you can kind of see, like, it goes super quick. Um, and then I'll just go to the next one. Uh, so this is where you get the second speed item, the Tuft of Yakfur from Pangsong. It's in the Dread Wastes, again, an MOP. You can see here on the map. Uh, like, again, like, it takes maybe a minute to get this item. Uh, it's super quick will basically allow you to get ahead of the pack so that you're not fighting for mob spawns, etc. So I really recommend people to get this. But the thing that I'm going to use a lot is these Radnex control gems. Um, they're also unique, but you can loot them and send them in a mailbox to any character. You can also buy them off the auction house. They're actually super easy to farm in Legion. And so I'm gonna have a picture here and a brief video of like, how I would kill these mobs on multiple characters to get to get them, um, and then uh, show you how I use these red annexes. So if I use one, you can see it's super quick. It's much faster than a mount. Um, and the nice thing about this is you can basically have like 50 of them in the mailbox if you want. Um, and I'll show you some footage of how I used it in my leveling routes, basically. Um, you have mailboxes from Molly, then you have Katie's stamp whistle. You can also have a guild chest, like I don't actually have it because on the beta I'm not in a guild, but you can have these Rednex control gems in a guild um, and then get it from the bank. Um, and I'll basically show you how, how to use them because they're they're super quick. now. Uh, so here I'll just quickly show you how to farm the Cracked Radonyx Control Gem. Um, so it's in Dalaran and Legion. You need to have Argus unlocked. You just use the beacon to go to the ship. Then you get stuck in the loading screen. <laughs> um, and then you go to the next portal in the ship. You click this console. It's here at the bottom, Hope's Landing. And then there's three spots at which rares can spawn that drop this cracked Radonex control gem. So the gem itself, super quick, quite nice. 
Um, and the important thing is to say, yes, it's unique, but you can basically mail it to your mailbox again. Um, so the first where is up. Didn't drop, but that's the first rare. So here in the map. Then the next rare is over there. Uh, here, where there's also world cast for it up at the moment. Um, and so it can be that none of these rares are up. One of them is up. Um, I believe there's a Wohat post that kind of describes how they spawn. I think like every three hours a new one can spawn, uh, but you can kill them only once per day. Um, Usually I just go once a day, kill whatever's up. If it's one rare, fine. If it's all three, then I was lucky. Um, so that was the second rare. And then the third rare is up there. And you go. You have to go and take a portal, which is over here. So this is the portal that you take up. Doesn't look like the rare is up. No, it's not. But here at the end of the bridge is usually a rare. Uh, and those are the three rares that you can drop the Crack Dragon X control gem. You can do that on as many characters as you want. So I would usually do that on all my characters. Like you don't need to be max level, you don't need much gear. Uh, you just go here. As long as you have Argus unlocked, you can kill it, send it to your main in the mailbox, and have many of these gems for leveling. So it's just to show how quickly you can get all of these Rattling's control gems in your mailbox and then anytime you need them you can just get them in the town with the Molly or Katie toys or with a guild bank. Please don't nerf these Rattling's control gems, Blizzard. One of the nice things that for all of these speed items is there's a macro and I'll share that also in the description is this cancel aura macro. And that basically allows you, I have it by bound to T. I'm on my right and X, go quickly. Like let's say here I reach the spot that I want to get off, press my macro to get off and I'm off. It's exactly the same if I want to use gun shoes. I'm on gun shoes, press my macro, they're off. Um, and so you can use this to really like move very quickly. Um, some other nice items are from Dark Moon Fair. So it's this Dark Moon Cannon. Um, in past expansions, this was super nice because you could kind of use this to traverse a pretty large distance um, and also to kind of shoot you over certain obstacles. Um, it's a lot less nice in Dragonflight because you have Dragon Riding, which is massive, but so you could use Dark Moon Cannon, Glider, and like go over a mountain or something like that. Um, this Dark Moon Cannon, it comes from a, uh, an achievement in uh, the Dark Moon Fair, and I'll have a link to that as well. Um, with another video that kind of shows you how to easily get this. Um, and then you have Falling Flame. Falling Flame is an amazing item um, that basically shoots you super high up in the air. Um, it only has 50 charges, but it is a pain to farm. So it comes from this rare in the Timeless Isle called Cinderfall. Um, and it has like a 1% or 2% drop chance. And a lot of people are actually farming this item now because they want it for launch. Um, and I'll show you a video here of why you want it. Like, basically at the start of the expansion, there's a boat ride or a zeppelin ride for Alliance and Horde that brings you to the first quest area. That ride takes like a good minute. If you fall in flame, you're there in 10 seconds and you start the entire quest area ahead of everyone else and you have zero competition. Which is also why I feel pretty confident playing war mode because I'll be faster than other people. Um, so in this video I'll just show you a really good spot to use the falling flame on launch. This is basically the boat that you take straight to the Dragon Isles. Um, and you can skip a ton of RP by using falling flame. After the loading screen, I'll show you. So almost everyone's just going to be stuck on this boat. You get out of the loading screen. The key thing that you want to do is glider first and then falling flame, which allows you to control where you go with the falling flame. So you jump off the boat, glider, falling flame, almost lagged out. Um, and then the key thing is just when do you want to cancel your uh, 
falling flame. So you kind of want to angle yourself so that you can land into the camp. And then like this mountain you can kind of use as a reference point. So I think now you don't take fall damage when you land with falling flame, which is good to know. And then you land here. And this is where the quests start. Another really insane spot um, for the Falling Flame is here in the second zone. Um, you're gonna be waiting here for the story on two dragons and then you have to mount one that's gonna fly you while talking um, all the way here. But it's way faster um, and it will work with the campaign to just leave the dragon, so leave the vehicle and come here, glider, Falling Flame um, and you again go to the sanctuary. Um, the nice thing is also you can kind of stop with the falling flame where you get another dragon glyph really easily. Um, and so this taxi takes a couple of minutes but this is way way faster. Um, so here's the sanctuary and so I like going here because it allows you to dismount really easily. Then you dragon mount, you take the glyph, and then like right here is where the campaign asks you to end. The other item that I want to mention is checkered flag. And basically, if you use it, it increases mount speed by 30% for 10 minutes. Um, I already have used 50 charges in the past, so I can't actually use it on this character. But if I if I was going for like world first or something like that, it would be great to have that item because it also works with dragon riding. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention was war mode. So in my opinion, you if you're speed leveling and you want to level as quickly as possible, you always want to play with war mode just because of the XP gains you get. But also some classes have like super OP PVP abilities like this Moonkin aura, Thorns and Starburst are insane for leveling. And like if there's a group with multiple Moonkins, they're gonna abuse these two talents basically. Like it's going to be super strong. Like mages have super good PvP talents, um, monks have super good PvP talents. Um, and honestly, like especially if you're Horde, I don't think you're gonna get ganked. As Alliance, it's a little bit risky, but then if you play with these these cloaks, I think it's fine. Um like one thing that you could always do is kind of start with war mode off and then if you see okay I'm ahead of other people at a point where you want to hearthstone back to the quest hub or something you use your cloak turn war mode on hearthstone back to the quest hub um so I I I am going to play with war mode because I want to basically ding as fast as possible um some add-ons that I've also mentioned in previous videos that are super super helpful Leatrix Plus it's like an auto turn in add-on automates quests and gossip sells junk automatically repairs also has in system it has these two options for faster auto loot and faster movie skip which are kind of nice but there's two other add-ons called cinematic canceller and speedy auto loot and they're actually a bit faster than latrix plus so that's why i have those um, there's also a fast auto repair one but that's not massive um, and then weak auras there are some key weak auras like this banner one I also have a weak aura for dragon riding and someone in my guildmate. I'll share that also. It's super nice to kind of just visually show you when you have the dragon riding trill disguise buff so that you can um, optimize your vigor while leveling, basically. Um, I would actually advise you to, to disable all the other add-ons just because, like, uh, a lot of them still give you errors. So sometimes, like, I think at the moment I have TomTom -tom disabled because... When I pressed travel form, it used to give me an error, so I I had to like disable the add-on to get rid of the error. Um, so I would play without that. Um, those are the main things that I want to talk about in this video. Uh, the only other thing that I wanted to mention is today is the last day of Darkmoon Fair. But one of the really key things that most people going for like server first, world first, etc. will do which is honestly a little bit lame that it works, but it works, um, is if you log out with this Wii buff, you can see here I have it because my character had it uh, and I logged out, um, it basically remains, it doesn't count down, and for the first hour of the new expansion, you have 10% extra XP and also 10% rep gain, which are both pretty damn nice. 
Um, so if you don't need or want to play your main or like all of your alts uh, in the next two weeks, then you could log out with this buff and have it for the first hour uh, of the expansion. All right, I hope this was useful for everyone. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to reply. Thank you.